Today, we're talking about the Nikon Z FC. Z FC, we're in Canada. It should be Z. Finally, my dreams have been answered. The Nikon Z FC. Yes, I said Z because I'm from Canada. Even though Nikon probably prefers me to call it the, the Z FC. But to me, that sounds a little bit weird. Z FC? Kind of sounds like you're at a French restaurant and the waiter's asking you if you're ready to order or if you need more time with the menu. Now, the Z FC sounds like zombie football club or zombie fight club, both of which sound like great ways to spend a Sunday afternoon. Now the Nikon Z6 II kinda sounds like Zisu, which I'm into. Here's footage of us in Santorini to add to the production value of this video, but that's out of scope of this project. Today, we're talking about the Nikon Z or Z FC Zombie Football Club. So the Nikon ZFC is, inside at least, it is a Nikon Z50 for the most part. And the Nikon Z50 is one of my favorite cameras that Nikon or any camera manufacturer has ever produced. Now you might be like, what? Nikon can't just bring out the same tech in a retro package and expect us to buy it. And here is my viewpoint. They took what was already an incredible and a very underrated camera and made it even better. If I was not a full-time pro photographer and video creator, the Z50 and now the ZFC would do everything that I would ever need from a camera. Now, the reason you're seeing images from the Nikon Z50 is because it is for the most part, the same internal system in the Nikon FC is, it, is what you're seeing here. But with my pre-production FC, I can't yet access the RAW files, Capture NX, which is Nikon software, hasn't been updated and Adobe hasn't updated to support yet. That will be coming soon, but for now, these are some final files that I am super happy with. And if anything, the FC is going to be even better than this somehow. The size obviously makes it an ideal travel camera. Uh, this is the 28 f 2.8, which is a new lens that they've just released. This makes a great general walk around camera, but also makes just a great portrait camera as well. As you can see, the autofocus performs incredibly well, and I know that Nikon in general, the, the Z series, gets a little bit of hate still online, but I just want to tell you to look at current samples, and really the iAF is fantastic. One of the other things that I hear a lot online is that the eye autofocus doesn't detect at a far enough distance. Uh, I'm going to show you kind of in reverse here, the distance where iAF disengages and actually just turns to face detect, which is totally fine. But I would say that that is a more than reasonable uh, iAF in 2021. To give one more example, this is walking and also spinning. And you'll notice how fast the IAF reachieves focus uh, now, whereas this did not used to be the case maybe two years ago on the Z series. Now for a few straight out of camera examples, here they are. Again, I don't have access to the raw files, but I am very, very happy with these JPEGs. Uh, you can also tell it straight out of camera because I'm always on a slant like that. The autofocus of this camera really does surprise me. Uh, it says that there are autofocus points over 87% of the sensor. So basically that means that as long as somebody is reasonably within your frame, it will get that eye detect on them and, and make sure that everything is good and sharp for you. Now the biggest change to this camera is the fully articulating screen. Up until this point, all the Z series cameras have just had the, the flip screen, which is great. And as a professional photographer, I actually do prefer that. But as a general content creator, I do find the fully articulating screen a little more useful. To talk more about the screen, the fully articulating screen, I can I can hear the cheers through the, through the camera. Uh, very happy that Nikon finally put this on one of their cameras. And I'm hoping that this comes to one of the full frame cameras. I don't need it to come to all. I just want it to come to one of them. Um, that's all I need. Uh, so for selfies, for self filming, it makes it really easy uh, or just for general video production. When you're out there, you're doing some travel videos or whatever it might be. Um, it makes your process a little bit easier and uh, more ergonomic overall. Travel wise, it just adds that extra level of versatility that you can take a selfie with it. Um, and also the IAF, the eye autofocus works in video mode as well. One of the potential use cases for this camera is that of vlogging, a utensil for vlogging, a tool 
for the for the vlog. And I think that this camera is great for it. Up here we actually have a Rode VideoMic NTG, so that's the audio that you're hearing right now. And it's the kit lens, a 16 to 50, uh, which is uh, at the wide end a 24 millimeter equivalent. And I honestly am super happy with the 24. Uh, I've used some other cameras that are a 24, and they felt a little too close. I feel like this is actually acceptable. So as a tool for self filming, uh, check mark and super happy about it. That's what I'm gonna be using it for probably the most. Do you need a sandwich? How about a camera? Either way, you've come to the right place. This camera obviously is based on the older film style cameras, the FM series, and you can get it in a number of different colors, which is kind of cool. I really like the, there's a brown one that I'm kind of interested in. The dials are all physical mechanical dials with little touch locks here. So if you wanna move, you gotta, you gotta touch the button so you're not gonna accidentally hit anything. The battery, is in fact a battery. But the update is that you can actually charge it continuously by USB-C. So if you want to run this as a webcam, you can actually just plug it in and you can just, that's, that's the, the talking point. I heard you wanted a poorly composed photograph of a Canada goose as a sample photo. Here it is. And now walking across the street photograph this building and the straight out of camera image looks like a final image there's nothing that i would do to that and that was just the jpeg into a 1 slash 20th of a second panning photo and that's nice the one thing that i enjoyed very much with my nikon z50 that i'm now enjoying on the zfc is the three-dimensionality and just realness to images this is a straight out of camera file and it feels very real to life, even though it's not really anything, it's just a sign. But if it was people that you cared about, it'd be nicer. Next up, photo of a pizza shop. Wait for it. There it is. A little underexposed, but I actually kind of like the way the tones kind of mute together. It's very nice. Is that a term, mute together? I feel like I made that up. So this next image, the composition sucks, that's my fault. But the tones from this camera, do they feel like a camera brand that starts with the letter L? Because they do to me. This is the part of the evening where I'm like, hmm, color palette should be a lot cooler, so let's switch to incandescent light mode. Massive error. And I can't access the raw files, so I can't even fix these files yet for you. So I will show you the incandescent in a non-incandescent environment. It will get there, the blue, blue hour will come around, but right now, not there yet. Just wanna give a quick shout out to the VR of the lens, uh, the image stabilization within the lens or the optical stabilization, I suppose. Uh, I have been able to shoot at one slash three of a second, so one third of a second with no problems at all, as long as nothing's really moving within your frame, unless you want that to be the case. Uh, but the stabilization works really incredibly well, which helps you keep your ISO down a little bit, even though high ISO isn't really a problem uh, for this camera. Oh, I guess the song just kinda ends there. We're here today in a bush with an Icon ZFC. Why is it a bush? Why is it a world? Santa Claus is coming to town. The Nikon ZFC is a camera that comes in at under $1,000 and the image quality far exceeds that. It goes up a little bit in price, but not actually a whole lot, depending on which lens you'd like with it. You can either get the kit lens. I feel like kit lens, I feel bad calling it that because it is an incredible kit lens. It is something that I would be very happy to shoot and have shot all around the world. And then we also have the all new 28 f 2.8 they're both great lenses i would choose the 28 if i was in more of a portrait setting i would choose the 16 to 50 kit lens if i wanted ultimate versatility it's still a good portrait lens but this i find is a little bit better and by better i guess it's a bit of a subjective term uh, basically you can get shallower depth of field and blurrier backgrounds that feel a little bit nicer than with the kit lens on the video side of things with the Nikon ZFC, you can do 4K video with eye autofocus tracking, which is great if you're trying to vlog with it or you're just making videos yourself, or if you just wanna make sure that everything is in nice crisp focus and you don't wanna to focus too hard on the technical, I think that that's one of the amazing things with the Nikon Z mount. It's a very large mount. And basically what that means for you without getting too technical is that you're going to get better sharpness, more accurate autofocus, better contrast in your photos and just better image quality overall. Here are some sample video clips. They are 4K at 24 frames per second. I would say typically I actually shoot 
regular HD at 60p, so I'm shooting 60 frames a second, so if I want to make anything slow motion. In this specific case, this is uh, 24 frames per second, real, real speed, coming at you. Very exciting footage. Wow. Incredible, a bus turning. Have you ever seen anything more remarkable than this footage? Whoa, followed by Tesla, that really surprised at the end. And here we have the sign that we saw last night, but now it is daytime. And a bus, again. Many buses. Many trains. Guy on a one wheel. This man wearing a suit. This is our studio. Here's some promotion for myself. Please enjoy. This isn't my car, but I filmed it. This building again? It's probably enough. Action! This button down here kind of blends in with the retro styling. Uh, it's actually a function button, and I have mine set to white balance, but you can set it to whatever whatever you would enjoy having. That function button size, it's in a very nice spot. Right there. I think that's the shot. The ergonomics of this camera are great. I do hope, I'm sure Nikon's already feeling the pressure. Uh, they have a, a small grip that you can attach here, um, but it's not yet coming to North America from what I know. I'm hoping that maybe that changes, but I would love the option of having something there for if I know I'm going out for the full day of photography, um, that I can just make it the camera the most ergonomic possible while maybe sacrificing a little bit of the size. Um, you can see that in comparison to the, so this is the Nikon Z6 II uh, versus the ZFC. Definitely um, <laughs> this wins the, the size battle. In weight, it also wins as well, obviously, um, but I guess different tools. Maybe I should make direct comparisons between that. It's very easy to switch between photo and video modes. So this is just one little button right here. And your record button is actually kind of in the perfect spot right up here, right, right beside the shutter button. So as both a photo and video camera, as we do a lot of hybrid coverage, it's very, very easy to use. Well done. Uh, well, when it comes to low light performance, I was actually very, very impressed. I was impressed with the Z50. So the, basically the, the insides from the Z50 have kind of been put in here for the most part. And I was absolutely blown away by the quality that I was getting in low light. Um, this is some footage from Japan when we were doing the, the show we did for Nikon. If you're interested, check out our, our show. We got, we got a show with Nikon around the world with Taylor Jackson. Please, please come through. Link in the description. And in Japan, I went for a walk at nighttime and I figured that I was gonna get, come back with a couple usable images or maybe I'd have to kind of cheat and get my shutter speed real slow and if anything was moving in the frame, it'd be blurry. Um, but as it turns out, you can kind of ask the camera to do anything that you would want to within reason. And in every circumstance, it actually performed better than I ever could have expected it to. Overall, I feel like this camera is a very easy camera to use. Uh, I don't know if that is a term that I could use to describe a camera, a very easy camera, uh, but I do find that this camera to pick it up, especially with a kit lens and just go like, you know, wh whatever you're going to find yourself in whatever situation that you're going to be able to create great images from it. Uh, if you want to go even more automatic, there are automatic modes that are pretty smart. Um, I typically shoot either a manual or aperture priority most of the time. And I've been very happy with the choices that this camera makes when in aperture priority. Thank you so much for watching our video on the Nikon ZFC. Uh, thank you to Nikon for giving me this camera for the day so we were able to actually come out here and create our own video and take some photos for you. Uh, this is a camera that I'm going to be purchasing with my own money, so if that says anything at all about how useful I find it. Um, as a travel camera, really, really excited to have this out into the world whenever we start to, to travel again. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Like the video. If you like the video, just leave now. Sandwiches. That's the thumbnail, it's so bad. It's just a very out of focus staring Taylor at your name. <laughs>